176 on 177. So we have this one is statement one. This one is statement three. One is one and two. One and three. And then two and three. So as x increases from 165 to 166, which of the following must increase? So we have statement one, which is 2x minus 5. Statement two, which is 1 minus 1 over x. And statement three, which is 1 over x squared minus x. Right, well, we, we just have to tackle the statements one at a time and uh, eliminate them based on that. So um, they give us these numbers 165 to 166, but it actually doesn't matter. And in fact, it's going to be a lot easier to handle this question if we say, uh, so 165 to 166, if we say, no, we don't care about you. It would be just the same as if we did it from three to four, because the question is really asking what happens to each of these expressions as x goes up? What happens when x gets bigger? When it starts off as a, as a positive number and stays a positive number but becomes a bigger one. So um, what happens when um, you take a number that you are doubling and subtracting 5 from it? Um, does it get bigger? Because we're looking for which of the following must increase. So I mean again let's just take our example of 3 to 4. So 2 times x 2 times 3 is 6, minus 5 is 1. Uh, if when x is 8, 2 times, or x is, two, x is 4, 2 times 4 is 8, minus 5 is 3. So um, when x is a regular old positive integer and it increases, statement number 1 definitely increases, no matter what value you put in for x, as long as it's, you know, positive integer and all that. So we can eliminate all the answer choices that do not include statement 1. That means you, statement, uh, uh, or answer choice B, and that means you uh, answer choice E. Let's look at <clears throat> number two. Uh -oh. There it is. Sorry, lost my cursor. Um, anyway, so same thing. Uh, statement number two. What happens with state statement number two? So statement number two is one minus one over x. Uh, 1 over x then is a fraction and remember that as fractions um, as the denominators get bigger the fraction actually gets smaller 1 half is a bigger thing 0.5 is greater than uh, 1 fourth which is 0.25 so as x gets larger the fraction gets smaller and as you subtract a smaller fraction from 1 you are left with more let's use our buddies here 3 and 4 again 1 minus 1 third equals 2 thirds, or let's just call it 0.6, for, so we can compare the two easily. Um, when x equals 4, 1 minus 1 fourth, um, uh, that equals uh, you know, 1 minus 0.25, so that equals 0.75. So the larger that x gets, the less we are subtracting from 1. Um, so choice 2 definitely goes up. That actually allows us to eliminate answer choices A and D, but let's talk about why answer choice uh, or why statement 3 is wrong. So I mean we've already arrived at the correct answer because we're smart, but um, with statement number 3, with x only in the denominator, so remember in statement number 2 we're subtracting a, a, a fraction that's getting smaller as x gets bigger from 1, so we're left with more and more left over. With this one, statement 3, all we're left with is a fraction where the denominator just gets bigger. And as we discovered in statement number 2, if you're doing nothing other than increasing the size of the denominator, you are simply decreasing the value of the fraction. So while statement 2 goes up, statement 3 goes down. Um, and let's use our buddies 3 and 4 again. So 3 squared is 9, minus 3 is 6. 4 squared um, 
is uh, 16. Oh, sorry, but then this equals 1 sixth. Um, and then uh, 4 squared minus x, 4 squared minus 4 gives us 12, it's 1 12th. So would you rather have 1 sixth of a million dollars or 1 12th of a million dollars? I'd actually be happy with either, but if I got to pick, I'd choose the 1 sixth, but answer or statement number three, sorry, I keep getting those two confused because I'm not used to having statement questions. Um, answer choice, uh, statement three, goes down the larger x gets. So it's answer choice C. Okay, enough of that. On to the golden question, page 177. Question 177, there's really nothing golden about it. I just, it's the same page number as question number, so uh, I just had to say something about that. So our answer choices are 15, 20, 25, 10 times the square root of 2, and 10 times the square root of 3. So a rectangular box is 10 inches wide, 10 inches long, and 5 inches high. What is the greatest possible straight line distance in inches between any two points on the box? So, I mean, whenever you're given one like this, the longest distance, you know, just imagine you have a box in front of you um, with one of the corners pointing towards you. Um, the longest distance in any box is going to be the top corner that's closest to you down to the bottom corner opposite you. Uh, so yes, we cannot do this. Well, you know, I guess we could do it without a picture, but you know, the miracle of the internet says that we can draw pictures. So we'll just pretend that this actually looks like it's 10 by 10 by 5. So 10, 10, and then a height of 5. And so what we're saying here, uh, what color? Yeah, we can use green. So the longest distance is the distance from this far corner down to this, to the front corner on the opposite side. I kind of wish I hadn't drawn it quite like that because it loses. There we go. That's a little bit better. So what that is, is it's a triangle. Um, and it's, and that's the hypotenuse of a right triangle of um, one vertical side, the line we're actually trying to figure out, and the diagonal of the bottom of the box. So first we actually, hit, so we can use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out this green hypotenuse. Um, I apologize if you um, have trouble viewing colors. Um, hopefully the order and the where the mouse cursor is will make this clear. Um, we can figure this out if we um, have, we can just use the Pythagorean theorem of the height squared times this, um, the bottom here, the dashed line squared. Those two, um, you know, it's the whole x squared plus y squared equals z squared, where um, x is the height. Uh, y is the diagonal of the bottom of the box, and then z squared is the longest distance between any two points on the box. However, because we only have the exterior um, side lengths, 10, 10, and 5, we first have to figure out what this diagonal is. So imagine then that this is the bottom of the box. The bottom looks like a square because we find out that it is a 10 by 10 square. And so the red dashed line is, the, I should maybe make it consistent. There we go. So this is our red dashed line. You may recall that um, the properties of uh, 45, 45, 90 triangles, which, uh, you know, this, this is what happens when you have, when you do the diagonal of a square, you divide it into two, um, isosceles triangles with a 90 degree angle there and then each of these is a 45 degree angle. Uh, the ratio of the sides are x to x to x times the square root of 2. If you didn't remember that you could just say well you know the Pythagorean theorem would would give us you know 10 squared plus 10 squared equals you know we'll call that z for now z squared z squared equals 200, z equals the square root of 200, 
um, and z equals 10 times the square root of 2. So however we figure it out, we now realize that this value here is 10 times the square root of 2. Now we can plug that back into our triangle, and I'm going to draw that as a new one. And I flipped the direction, I'm sorry about that. But, so just as a refresher, that's the solid red line here, which is the height of the box. The base of our triangle is the thing we just figured out, is the dotted red line. And the hypotenuse, where is that? That's this guy, is the green line, the longest distance between any two points on the box. So the height, the red line, we already knew that was given to us in the question. That's 5. So 5 squared. The uh, other leg of the triangle is the dotted line. We found out that that's 10 times the square root of 2 squared. Um, and that equals z squared. Um, so again, then we have 25. Um, 10 times the square root of 2 squared equals 200, because we actually just did that in reverse. That equals z squared. z squared equals 225. And um, it is well worth your while to have memorized the squares of numbers up through, I would say, 15. Um, and as it turns out, 225 is 15 squared. I didn't just pick that out of a hat. It's just that you're much less likely to ever have to recognize at a glance the square of 19. Uh, one's bigger than that, like the square of you know 20 or something, you should recognize at a glance. But um, knowing what 18 squared is, less useful. Uh, the lower you get, in the teens, the more useful it is to be able to recognize the squares. I, so I just picked 15 kind of arbitrarily. Anyway, uh, that is a good place to stop. Full color drawings looking all important and nice. Next time, uh, we will pick up with question number 178, with it, which has a little table included, um, on page 177. You've been watching Grockett's OG TV GMAT edition. We're going through the 12th edition of the guide, um, and we're Getting close to the end of the problem solving. What does that go up to? Problem solving section goes up to 2.30. So I would say three or four more sessions and we'll be done with the problem solving se section. Anyway, um, hope to see you next time. And um, yeah, happy studying in the meantime.